Hope your weekend's off to a good start. Jordan Trask here, and I wanted to do a quick video because another person asked me today, what is a breakdown of pre-focus services? What exactly do you do? And what can I tell somebody? In most cases, this means somebody is interested now. They've watched some of my videos, they've been confused, right? Believe it or not, this is what I do on purpose. You know, I don't believe in selling. I don't believe in being aggressive and telling people why they should hire me. I want to try to help people with some of the things that I've learned or faced or ran into. So anyways, to answer the question, until I'm able to sit down with somebody and really see what their vision is, what their goals are, what they've accomplished, what their knowledge is, what their understanding is, I can't even tell if I can help. Somebody has to be primed and it has to be a business owner that's serious about what they're doing. I need to be able to determine if they're ready, if they could do it themselves, if there's some ways that I can equip them for free, if there's some people that I can point them to. Then we'll start to really analyze some things. And the first thing that I always analyze or assess is their marketing. If you don't have a good marketing assessment, you don't have a breakdown or understanding of what you're doing, why you're you're doing it, how it's played out, how you're measuring it, why you measure it that way, who it affects, honestly, how it impacts your customers or potential customers or the first impression. Like you have to be able to see this. You, you can see something that could have good results. Say 50% of people convert. Wow, this is a good money maker. The returns is six to one. But what about if the other 50% have a terrible taste in their mouth from the marketing strategy that you're participating in? What if you ruin that first impression? What if they never come back? You may have that immediate return right now, but if something off down the road you could lose customers to somebody that's doing it better you know you always have to be preventative and be able to see hey am i putting my foot in my mouth is somebody gonna digest this incorrectly or am i even aware that there's other business out there that could be better than mine and marketing assessment isn't just about analyzing your website it's not about seeing how much traffic you have how your seo is performing or if your ad strategy could be better whether that be on google or facebook it's about assessing top to bottom including who's managing it you could even have a really good marketing strategy that's developed internally that you've handed off to a contractor that barely speaks English that's botching a lot of the messaging and it's making you look like a second grader right people say this all the time if you don't have a business card you don't have a suit and tie all these things like you must have if you don't have correct grammar on your website it don't matter what type of suit you're wearing one little thing can hinder the entire customer journey right or perception what's the valued perception a lot of people don't even like talk about this it's one of those things I talk about in my marketing assessments is what you're saying actually believe is it seen as valuable or are you being persuasive or convincing you may like the voice you may think your voice fits but if it doesn't fit your ideal target audience or an opportunistic target audience what are you doing did you build your business for you is that what your goal is no your goal is to grow and build awareness by not being cheesy but being genuine authentic anywho the second thing that I like to look at is the culture and this is another thing that people seem to think that you have to be a psychiatrist or organizational communication specialist or something like that but it doesn't take a lot to sit down with some of the people within your organization, within your culture, and see where the holes are, where the experience or the overall environment is lagging, right? Where could we improve? At the end of the day, if your people aren't happy or if the culture doesn't make sense or you're just guessing or throwing things at the wall, seeing if it sticks and all your employees know, your customers are the ones that pay for that. Susie could be having a bad day, coming to work, you make it worse because she hates her job or maybe she just doesn't understand the why behind something, which is really simple. She can treat Billy, Joey, Thomas, Ralph, whoever else is your customer that day poorly. Even if she's barely in front of them, those three or four customers could never come back. These are all things that we want to pre-focus on. The culture itself should be a foundational element anyways. You should know exactly what direction you're heading in and why and have reasons to be able to explain to your people. That way you could determine whether or not they fit when you hire them, whether they're buying in and whether they're a long-term, a suitable option, okay? So the culture is important. We got to look at it. We got to look at hiring process. We got to look at the processes in general, CR how are we handling things, managing things? What's human resource look like? Who's in charge of that? What type of leader are they? All these things, it all trickle down to your ability to make money or be seen as a qualitative option, right? The third thing that we look at is the branding and all these things tie into it. So if you know, you're not tying things down on the front end, you don't have a foundation, then you don't really have an identity at all. How do you go about managing things with customers and employees and why? All these things you have to be able to map out and talk about and explain and it has to make sense it has to be something that's real authentically you we're creating an experience we're creating an environment we're creating an aura right
right? We're creating a look and feel that shouldn't just be cute, creative, or something that you want or you like. It has to make sense. Having an identity allows people to relate to you, identify with you, and understand exactly what you're aiming for, right? And lastly, what all of these previous three things lets us do is focus on a marketing strategy. When it comes to your business and your identity, you're uniquely you, just like your customers. They're going to appreciate certain things and you're going to appreciate certain things. Understanding leads everything. Taking the time to research things, the origin stories, passion behind the business, the actual value propositions you have. What are your competencies? What's your experience? What do you bring to the table? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? How do you use all these things? Not to your advantage, but to your customer's advantage. Investing in a really, really specific strategy that we spend a month or two developing can be so much more fruitful. I don't want to go into too much detail with this. I'm trying to bite my tongue a little bit because there are some things that I do focus on that I believe is kind of a recipe I'm not really willing to share. But at the end of the day, getting in front of you guys and talking about this stuff and just spewing out as much as I can should help you understand what exactly pre-focus is. You're not hiring me to just do X, Y, Z that the person before couldn't do very well. We're really sitting down and figuring out where is their opportunities in your business. If you haven't even launched yet, even better, how do we get off the ground from the beginning without stumbling out the gate? How do we make sure that we're certain about the things that we're doing, the initiatives that we have, who we're hiring, what culture we're building, and the voice that we have without putting our foot in our mouth, right? Everything has to have a rhyme and reason. It just does. And if you're hiring people and they're not taking the time or investing the time to learn what you know or understand your business and you're doing what they're telling you, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. And I'm just going to tell you that right now. So when you pre-focus, you're really taking things to the next level. That's why I say, unless somebody's really ready or understands why they need somebody to work with them to really nail things down or dial in their strategy a little bit, then it's no point in me trying to sell you or offer my services or explain them. I might as well try to give you some nuggets in order to garner your support so that you could see that I'm in it for you, not necessarily for me. So yeah, think about that stuff. If you ever run into somebody that's trying to convince you to do what they tell you to do, and, and maybe they're even being a little condescending about it, then that relationship's probably not going to be a good one over time. But when it comes to a pre-focus, just know that you're working with somebody that's going to take a lot of time on the front end. You're not going to necessarily see a lot of results right away. And I don't have a problem telling you that. It's going to deliver over time. This isn't me just walking through the motions in order to cash a paycheck. I'm a part of this brand, this story, this culture, because I'm invested in it. And if every single element doesn't make sense and it's not aligned and not cohesive with your brand identity, then again, you're just leaving money or opportunities on the table. So be purposeful with everything you do, guys. If you ever want to talk about something, I'm not a greedy dude. Have a good rest of your weekend.